When you're doing a film like The Chronicles of Riddick, you're no longer just creating a movie, you're creating a universe. The great thing about this universe is that we are introduced to so many different environments that help explain the story in some weird way. We took a lot of pride in the fact that we had such incredible sets. This is where it all happens. Control room, battle stations, uh, commanders come here and, and kind of plan out what their attack's going to be. Their blind spot is right behind them. Now look at this. You couldn't build a nightclub like this. Production designer Holger Gross wanted to take the design of the Chronicles of Riddick to places no sci-fi movie had ever been before. We tried to aim for a sci-fi look that has a more realistic approach. There is something that I haven't seen in movies. It is very European, the architectural style of Baroque. Everything is curved. It is a style of a almost visual illusion. The sheer scale and detail of the sets was a huge incentive to the actors. For an actor, it's fantastic. Magnificent, isn't it? The scale of the sets. I might have gone a different way. It means that you're literally submerged in a world. Everything around you is, is what you're supposed to be uh, responding to and feeding off, so it's really useful. Now I'm going to show you crematoria. All right, I make 700 degrees on the day side. 300 below on the night side. Let's not get caught in the sun. Crematoria is a world of almost indescribable harshness with temperatures at the extremes of hot and cold. We have to run all across the crematoria and the weather conditions are constantly changing. Don't wait for me, run! Crematoria is the worst place in imaginable. It's a little daunting because they had an enormous amount of real estate to actually run around on, trip, fall, do all those things that make it a little bit more real. Three, two, one, and action! Go, go. When I first saw the set, my mind spinning. I go, I'm gonna have to get ankle braces for everybody. I've got all these actors running and there's cliffs and big crevices and fissures and all that. Now throw a gun battle and ash rain on top of it, so now you can't see where you're going. It was, <laughs> it was unbelievable. I sweated that set more than any other set, just to, I twisted my ankle on it. This is New Mecca. This is where the story begins. The world of the Chronicles of Riddick was conceived on a massive scale, with sets laid out over thousands of square feet of studio real estate. Throughout these streets, we've seen explosions and these huge fights and battles take place in these streets. All of this has been used so effectively to create this world. But it wasn't just the physical sets. The movie's unique look also had to be created in the digital domain. I think always when you sort of approach a film like Riddick, the environments are probably the most difficult because Nothing exists that you can base anything on reality. You're always creating strange lighting, you're creating strange terrains, strange textures. And so therefore, it's only down to your own sort of judgment that kind of governs what the look of the shots will be. The digital effects for the movie were coordinated in London by the special effects house Double Negative, who had also helped to create the visual world of Pitch Black. Chronicles of Riddick is a much bigger picture. Probably somewhere in the region of six times bigger in terms of the scale in which the project have encompassed really. One particularly challenging shot was Riddick's approach to planet Helion. It was all completely generated in the computer. Lots of fluid dynamics going on in the water, lots of landscapes, digital 2, 2.5D two map painting in the background. A lot of textures, a lot of looks, a lot of colors were gleaned off of the live action so that the 
set extensions all look like the same environment. Another groundbreaking visual effect was centered on the climactic fight between Riddick and the Lord Marshal. He has the ability to astrally project himself to another location very quickly. This was one of the hero shots that established the look of the, the Lord Marshal. This is the first time within the fight sequence at the end of the film that we see him using his, his powers. The timings and the feel of the movement were critical to establishing you know, the pace of the fight, really. Um, it's kind of uncharted territory for everybody. It's not something that we'd certainly seen before. This, for example, is the live action for the first part of the move. We start off with the move as we saw Khan do it. And this is just a, a 3D lit body and the trail coming off the body. And here, for example, is a pass that we would use to refract the background so that the trail can have a glassy look. We had characters surrounding Riddick who were body doubles for Kong Fuel. And effectively, the action was choreographed so that the, the body doubles would faint and throw punches at different points in the sequence that was, was timed uh, very significantly from the stunt team and the fight choreographers. The portion between those two characters is fully computer generated, it's an animation. is a very savage-like fighter. He's always on the attack. He's always aggressive. All of Riddick's moves are designed to kill. There's no, there's none of this. It's all this. It's game over. It's very impactful um, and it's very final. We've taken pieces of everything and kind of meshed them together. We started with Kali, which is a real pretty Filipino knife fighting form, but involving acrobatic stuff, a little bit of the wire work, a little bit of wrestling. We are trying to create something new here. Riddick is not a martial artist. He's not a superhero. Ben went in there and said, let me put the Riddick spin on it now. And let me do this, this, and this. As good as, the, say, the fight coordination the stunt people were, you don't always approach it from a character point of view. And that's what I'm asking Finn to do. But it should always feel like an animal. It's always got to have an animal vibe to it. I'm surprised I'm still standing. Kira needed to be this fighting machine. So I knew that Alexa could take on this very active role. Alexa's character, Kira, her very first piece of business, first scene, was a fight scene in her cell. These guards come in and try to have their way with her, and they find out that you don't mess around with Kira. Look at Alexa deep now. Look at Alexa deep. And now he's grabbing a handful. He's grabbing a handful. She kicked ass in it. Now he's getting his ass kicked! What the Get in there, Vitaly! Get in there, Vitaly! Go, go, get it, get it! Cut, 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 cut. She did a flip on the wire and kick people and did all the fighting. When you look at her, she's so pretty and delicate. She's a young girl. She's not that way once we put her in her element there. It's an incredible feeling to, to learn how to work with the wires and yet learn how to correct them if need be in a moment where you're slightly on. Um, it's a lot of work and it is so much fun. Vin Diesel was as closely involved with the creation of the special effects as with every other facet of the movie making process. I went up there two months early just to kind of work on the development of it all. And you can do all this stuff. And then the special effects department comes in and it's like Christmas. And so like you see all these incredible enhancements and like presents. 